hi everyone in this video you are going to learn what are the other forms of uh, CMOS logic functions and in this video I am going to explain about uh, pseudo NMOS logic actually there are four different types of CMOS logic functions uh, which are other than NMOS logic uh, functions CMOS logic functions and by CMOS logic functions so the other forms of CMOS logic gate realizations are made up of pseudo NMOS logic and second one is dynamic CMOS logic, third one clocked CMOS logic and CMOS domino logic. So in this video I am going to explain about pseudo NMOS logic. So pseudo NMOS logic, what do you mean by pseudo? If you remove this word pseudo, NMOS logic realization already we know and we have studied in the previous video. So NMOS logic realization by the name we can clearly understand that all the gates which are made up of completely NMOS transistors. Okay that means the pull up transistors and pull down transistors both are only NMOS transistors when you consider only NMOS realization. But if you take pseudo NMOS, pseudo means partial, pseudo means partial not complete, pseudo means not complete partial so pseudo nmos logic consisting of half circuit made up of pmos logic functions and half circuit made up of nmos logic function see here in pull up realization so pull up consisting of one pmos transistor pull up consists of one pmos transistor and pull down consists of NMOS transistors, NMOS logic realization, NMOS logic realization, okay. So this NMOS circuitry or we can say it as N block, N block this gives the logic function, this gives the logic function whether it is AND gate, OR gate, NAND gate, NOR gate whatever the gate it is that is going to be implemented only with the NMOS transistors. But whereas in the pull up place we are using a single PMOS transistor and we are making that PMOS transistor always to be in on state. Okay. So in order to make this transistor PMOS transistor in on we have to give input to the 0 volts. So 0 volts is nothing but ground which is nothing but VSS. Okay, so what is the meaning of this one? So in the PMOS pull up transistor as a PMOS transistor which is applied with the 0 volts means it is a in a but on and it is simply acting like a resistor. Okay, so that there is a current flow from here to here like this up to this point, up to this point nothing but output point. Now depending upon the NMOS realization the output is given. So here this function is given for a into b into c whole bar by default complement form will come at the output as the mass logic and a b c as the nmos transistors are in series it should be a product a into b into c bar that means it is a three input nand gate that is going to be designed with the pseudo nmos logic so pseudo nmos logic means pull up transistor is a fixed pmos transistor and pull down transistor is nothing but number of NMOS transistors depending upon the logic function. As it is a 3 input to NAND gate, it is having 3 transistors. Okay. Pseudo means half NMOS, half PMOS, not complete NMOS. That's why it is partial NMOS logic realization and pseudo NMOS logic realization. This is what the meaning of pseudo NMOS. Okay. So what we are doing, we are just replacing the depletion mode pull up transistor in the standard NMOS circuits with a PMOS transistor with a gate connected to the VSS. Okay. So we have this structure similar to the NMOS equivalent. Hope you understand. Okay. So now in order to determine in order to determine the required ratio the 
in order to determine the required ratio of what do you mean by the required ratio which ratio we need zpu by zpd in the nmos inverter we know the zpu by zpd ratio must be 4 is to 1 okay a standard nmos inverter must be having a minimum of 4 is to 1 and above which is preferred for the proper operation of the nmos inverter for this pseudo nmos logic realization what should be the minimum pull up to pull down ratio required that we are going to calculate so in order to determine the required ratio we consider we consider the arrangement we consider the arrangement shown in figure see here this is the arrangement we have considered pseudo nmos inverter when driven from a similar inverter see it is the first one is inverter 1 and second this is the also inverter which is taken as 2 ok so now we are going to calculate like in the nmos inverter case or whatever we have done similarly we are doing the same so one nmos inverter pull up to pull down ratio is calculated which is driven by another nmos inverter so here also a pseudo nmos inverter pull up to pull down ratio calculated which is driven from another inverter so it is the pmos transistor which is having the input to 0 and it is the nmos transistor which is having the input that is to be given and again it is the pmos transistor input is grounded and the nmos transistor with the input is equal to output of the first stage okay so now <coughs> let us going to calculate the pull up to pull down ratio for such network okay so for the figure which is which is nothing but the pseudo nmos inverter pseudo nmos inverter driven by another pseudo nmos inverter okay pseudo nmos inverter driven by another pseudo nmos inverter that is what we have taken the circuit diagram okay so as for the nmos analysis we consider the conditions for which the inverter is inverter input is equal to vdd by 2 so as for the nmos analysis as for the nmos analysis we consider the condition for which V inverter is equal to VDD by 2. V inverter is equal to VDD by 2. V inverter is nothing but where the input is equal to output where the input is equal to output suppose if you are taking the characteristics like this between the input voltage and output voltage okay so somewhere it will be having equal potential where input is equal to output is equal to we are taking it as v inverter point okay at this point both transistors are in same status we are assuming that condition may occur at exactly half of the input voltage which is having 0.5 times VDD, 0.5 VDD, here also 0.5 VDD, okay. So, at this point, the N device is in saturation, at this point, N device, nothing but NMOS is in saturation,
and P device is operating in the resistive region, nothing but non-linear region. Resistive region. Okay. Equating currents of the end transistor and P transistor and by suitable rearrangement suitable rearrangement of the resultant expression resultant expression V inverter is equal to V in plus 2 mu p by mu n whole power 1 by 2 into minus v dd minus v t n threshold voltage of the NMOS transistor multiplied by v d s p drain to source voltage of the p MOS transistor minus v d s p square whole power 1 by 2 divided by divided by z p u by z p d whole power 1 by 2 see this one minus v d d minus v t n is this is nothing but current of the current which is drawing from the v d d through pmos transistor ok so we have taken all the parameters that are related to the PMOS transistor that's why here the VGS voltage is minus VDD and VT is nothing but threshold voltage of the transistor and VDSP where ZPU is nothing but Z is nothing but L by W Z is nothing but L by W here pull up device so ZPU by WPU and for ZPD, which is nothing but pull down device, LPD by WPD. So, length and width of the pull down transistor, nothing but NMOS transistor and ZPD, ZPU, length and width of the pull up transistor, which is nothing but a PMOS transistor. So, now let us consider some typical values with the typical values. V inverter is equal to, already I told you, V inverter is equal to exactly at 0 0.5 VDD. VTN is equal to mod VTP is equal to 0 0.2 times VDD. And we know VDD is equal to 5 volts. And the relation between mu n and mu p is mu n is equal to 2.5 times mu p. So, if you substitute all these by substituting all typical values ZPU by ZPD is equal to 3 by 1, 3 by 1, okay. That means Therefore, for a pseudo NMOS inverter should have a minimum pull up to pull down ratio pull up to
pull down raise show so for a pseudo nmos inverter a pseudo nmos inverter should have a minimum pull up to pull down ratio of 3 is to 1 above is preferred okay 3 is to 1 above which is preferred okay this is what the pseudo nmos inverter logic circuit in the next video i will explain dynamic cmos logic